In video games, storytelling isn't just a backdrop. It's the very essence of the experience, driving players forward on unforgettable journeys that resonate long after the credits roll. Hey guys, it's Andy, and today on Super Jump Reviews, 10 Best Story Games on PlayStation 5. Starting off with number 10 is Marvel's Guardians of the Galaxy. I gotta be honest with you guys, I've never seen any of the movies, so I had no idea what to expect going into this. Luckily for me, the game's story is an original narrative, separate from the Marvel Cinematic Universe and the comic books, but still draws heavily on the lore and personalities of the characters. The game has you playing as Peter Quill as he leads a team of misfits known as the Guardian of the Galaxy to retrieve a mysterious artifact known as the Cortex. Things don't go as planned and they end up unleashing a cosmic threat known as the Universal Church of Truth, led by the ruthless Magus. Don't you just hate it when that happens? The game has you navigating through various environments, engaging in combat encounters, solving puzzles, and making decisions decisions that affect the story's outcome. Spikes are incoming! You know, I love games that give you the ability to change up the narrative. It just makes you feel like you're more involved with the story. One of the central themes of the game is the bond between the Guardians and their growth as a team. You get to experience the dynamics between characters like Gamora, Dax, Rocket, and Root as they face personal struggles and conflicts while working together to save the galaxy. There's just so much emotion and personality put into the performance that it actually inspired me to want to watch the movies. I haven't done it yet, so don't get too excited. Overall, Marvel's Guardians of the Galaxy on PS5 offers an action-packed adventure filled with humor, heart, and epic moments showcasing the iconic characters in a new and exciting light. And number 9 is Final Fantasy VII Remake Integrade. Aside from being an upgraded version of the original game, Integrade features the same epic tale you remember from the 1997 classic. The game is set in the dystopian city of Midgar, where the Shinra Electric Power Company monopolizes the planet's energy supply, draining the life force of the planet known as the Life Stream. You follow Cloud Strife, the ex-soldier turned mercenary, as he teams up with Avalanche to take down this shady corporation. As the game progresses, Cloud Cloud and his friends get caught in a conflict with Shinra that escalates into a battle to save the planet from total annihilation. That's what I love about JRPGs. They start out simple enough, but then turn into a mission to save the entire human race. And the thing that amazes me is that it's done in such a subtle and clever way, you sort of just go along with it. Throughout the story, Cloud grapples with his past and struggles to understand his own identity, haunted by memories of his time in Soldier and his connection to a mysterious figure known as Sephiroth. It's so cool how these scenes were fleshed out even further in the remake. Regardless of how well you know the original story from 1997, the remake is sure to offer a few surprises. With its rich narrative, complex characters, and stunning visuals, Final Fantasy VII Remake is a modern reimagining of a classic RPG that continues to captivate players around the world. And number 8 is Control Ultimate Edition. What a creepy game this turned out to be. So you've got this girl named Jesse Faden, who's on a mission to find her brother Dylon who went missing. You ever notice how in these games it's always the brother that goes missing? So you end up at the Federal Bureau of Control looking for Dylon, and as luck would have it, the place is under attack by a creepy force called the Hiss. Think of it as an evil presence that's taking over people's minds and making them do bad stuff. Fortunately for us, we get to pick up a weapon called the Service Weapon. Looks like a Magnum, and tasked with taking out the Hiss. As she starts to dig deeper into the Federal Bureau of Control, she she uncovers a secret place called the Astral Plane. Oh, and she learns about this special thing called the Hedron, which is like a key to stopping the Hiss invasion. Throughout her journey, Jesse faces off against all sorts of freaky enemies and bizarre phenomena, like this trapped being called the Former, and this nasty stuff called the Mold that messes with everyone it touches. The game gets really weird the further in you go. With your psychic abilities, it almost feels like a cross between the X-Files and X-Men. There's a disturbing way to how the enemies lumber after you that always creeps me out. Control is praised for its spooky atmosphere, fun gameplay, and a story that dives deep into themes like power, control, and the supernatural. And of course, Jesse's one heck of a protagonist that keeps you hooked from start to finish. 
And number 7 is Resident Evil 4. You play as Leon S. Kennedy, a cool government agent tasked with rescuing the president's daughter, Ashley Graham. She's been kidnapped and taken to a creepy village in Europe where everyone's acting all weird because they're infected with this parasite called Las Plagas. Hmm. Kind of reminds me of the pandemic we just had a few years ago. You soon discover a cult called Los Illuminados, led by a bearded guy called Osmond Sadler. They're basically trying to use Ashley as a way to spread the parasite everywhere. As you fight through the village, castle, and other spooky places, you eventually team up with Louis, Sarah, and Ada Wong, whose voice isn't all that bad once you give it a chance. Guys, give her a break. She's doing the best she can. <laughs> Try using knives next time. Better for close encounters. Not a bad move. Very smooth. So who are you working for this time? Oh, Leon. You know I don't work in town. As you progress through the game, you soon uncover the shady dealings of Los Illuminados and their ties to the Umbrella Corporation. Yeah, remember those guys? With lots of intense battles against creepy enemies and some big twist in the story, Leon finally faces off against Sadler to save Ashley and put a stop to the cult's evil schemes. As a remake, Resident Evil 4 retains the essence of the original game while delivering a more visually stunning and immersive experience for both new players and fans of the original. And number six is Returnal. I have to be careful what I say here because I don't want to give anything away. So Returnal is this awesome game where you take on the role of Selene, a space explorer who crash lands on a super weird planet called Atropos. I don't know. She's on a mission to track down a strange signal she picked up in space, but things go a little sideways when she realizes she's stuck in a crazy loop of dying and coming back to life. As she explores Atropos, she starts piecing together her memories and discovers the remains of other folks who's been stuck in the same mess. She's basically in a cosmic Groundhog's Day situation. Has anyone seen that movie? With each loop, Selene learns more about Atropos, its weird alien inhabitants, and the secrets hiding within the planet. Oh, and did I mention the place keeps changing every time she dies? I mean, this is a roguelike shooter after all. The game features all sorts of crazy enemies, cool tech, and hidden powers. Along the way, she deals with some serious existential stuff like questioning her own sanity and identity. Eventually, Selene figures out that the mysterious signal she's chasing is connected to something called the broadcast. To break the cycle and save herself and the planet, she's got to confront the broadcast and make some big decisions. The only complaint I have with this game is its brutal difficulty. But if you've got the skill and determination, Returnal is a wild ride through a spooky world filled with mystery and danger that will keep you on the edge of your seat the entire time. And number five is Marvel's Spider-Man Remastered. You step into the shoes of Peter Parker in the bustling streets of New York City. Spider-Man has been keeping the city safe for a while, but things go haywire when the big bad kingpin gets taken down. This leaves a big old gap in the villain scene and chaos ensues. Meanwhile, as Spider-Man, you're juggling a superhero gig alongside a personal life. Your job, friendships, and some romantic tension with his pal Mary Jane Watson. Oh, baby. But then things take a turn when a new villain, Mr. Negative, pops up. Having a major grudge against Norman Osborn, Mr. Negative sets out to take his revenge. The great thing about this game is that it allows you to face off against a whole crew of villains from the Spider-Man universe. Villains like Rhino, Scorpion, Electro, and Vulture. Plus, you'll dig into the mystery of Mr. Negative's past and how it's all connected to Peter's life. You'll swing through iconic New York City landmarks, fight bad guys, and uncover some serious juicy secrets that'll shake Peter to his core. Along the way, you'll team up with pals like Mary Jane Watson and the up-and-coming Miles Morales. I have to admit, Marvel's Spider-Man is a total blast. It has a killer story, awesome gameplay, and graphics that make your jaw drop. Whether you're a diehard Spidey fan or just looking for a fun time, this game's got something for everyone. And number four is God of War. So we're back with Kratos, but this time he's traded in his Greek gods for some Norse mythology vibes. He's trying to lay low and live the quiet life in Midgard with his son Atreus. But you know how it goes in these games. The quiet life doesn't last. Kratos and Atreus then set out to fulfill the dying wish of Kratos' wife, Faye, which is to spread her ashes from the highest peak in the realm. Seems easy enough, right? Wrong. This journey is like a greatest hits tour of Norse mythology, with Kratos and Atreus bumping into all kinds of legendary figures like Baldur, Freya, and Mimir. They also get to fight with some seriously bad dudes, including trolls, dragons, and even a few gods like Thor and Odin. Along the way, Kratos tries to teach Atreus the ropes, but things aren't easy when your dad is the former god of war. Atreus learns some hard lessons about strength, courage, and the consequences of their actions. I love it when games do that. As the father and son climb towards the peak, they 
unravel some big secrets about Faye's past and Atreus's true heritage. Turns out he's not just any kid. He's part god, part giant, and he's got a major role to play in the fate of the realms. Their journey culminates in an epic showdown with Baldur, but things get kinda messy when Kratos has to face off against Freya, who's out for blood after Kratos takes down her son. God of War is a smash hit for a good reason. It's got an awesome story, jaw-dropping visuals, and enough emotional depth to make you feel like you've been through the ringer. No wonder it's a fan favorite and a must-play for any gamer. And number three is Uncharted Legacy of Thieves Collection. Alright, so here's the deal. This bundle comes with two unforgettable games, Uncharted 4, A Thief's End, and Uncharted The Lost Legacy. Now, if you're not familiar with the Uncharted series, it's basically like living out your wildest Indiana Jones fantasies. You follow the adventures of Nathan Drake, a super charming treasure hunter guy, as he travels all over the globe, hunting down ancient artifacts and getting into all sorts of crazy situations. In Uncharted 4, A Thief's End, Nate's pulled back into the game for one last big adventure. This time, he's teaming up with his long-lost brother Sam to find the treasure of the legendary pirate Henry Avery. But of course, things don't go as planned and Nate's got to deal with rival treasure hunters and some serious family drama along the way. Lena. Then you've got Uncharted The Lost Legacy which switches things up a bit. Instead of Nate, you're playing as Chloe Frazier and teaming up with Nadine Ross to track down this ancient artifact in India. It's a fresh take on the Uncharted universe with new characters and a whole new different vibe. Now, the Legacy of Thieves collection gives you remastered versions of both games with souped up graphics and performance. Plus, you get all the extra DLC that was released for both games. So it's like the ultimate Uncharted experience. And number two is Ghost of Tsushima, Director's Cut. Set in the late 13th century during Japan's Mongol invasion, the story follows Jin Sakai, a samurai who transforms into the ghost to defend Tsushima Island and expel the Mongols. The game starts off with a badly injured Jin Sakai. Realizing his traditional samurai tactics have their limitations, he adopts stealth and guerrilla warfare techniques to fight the Mongols. As the ghost, Jin embarks on various missions across Tsushima Island to weaken Mongol forces. During the journey, Journey, he is fraught with moral dilemmas as he struggles to balance his samurai code with the necessity of using dishonorable tactics to defeat the Mongols. And it's this reason alone why I think the story is so great. It gives Jin a more human quality. <laughs> Jin's battle against the Mongols culminates in a climatic showdown with Kotin Khan. With the help of his allies and the people of Tsushima, he launches a final assault on Khan's stronghold. The game ends and you're left reflecting on the long journey you've just taken. It really makes you think about the choices you made and whether they were even the right choices to begin with. Nothing seems as clear cut as most other games make it out to be, which is why the story in this game is so great. It gets you involved in the choices you make, leading to multiple possible endings. And finally, at number one is The Last of Us. Part 1. Set in a post-apocalyptic world where civilization has been devastated by a fungal infection that turns humans into aggressive creatures. The story revolves around Joel, a smuggler, and Ellie, a young girl who may hold the key to finding the cure for the infection due to her immunity. The game follows Joel and Ellie's journey across the United States as they navigate through dangerous environments filled with infected, hostile survivors, and other threats. Along the way, they develop a deep bond as they rely on each other for survival. At its core, the the Last of Us explores themes of survival, morality, and the lengths people will go to to protect those they love. It's a story of hope, loss, and the resilience of the human spirit in the face of adversity. The Last of Us is known for its emotionally impactful narrative, well-developed characters, and immersive gameplay mechanics, making it one of the most acclaimed titles in the gaming industry. Do yourself a favor, skip the sequel, because it does nothing but tarnish the legacy the original left behind. Get it? left behind and that's all for today guys leave me a comment if you like this video give it a like subscribing to the channel is free don't forget to enable notifications and of course thanks for watching i'm andy you can follow me on twitter at andy talk games later